For nearly three months, we've brought you the best sights, sounds, and moments from each week of the college and prep football season. And now that South Dakota's high school season has come to a close, it's time to ring the bell one last time for our champions in the season finale of Gridiron Greatness. Right now, you got to play like you got nothing to lose. Because guess what? You don't. Hey, they think they got this one. Let's go. Hey, we're going to show them who we are today. Remember what's on your chest and play with that at all times. Don't forget it. That's why we wear it. So we know that this family is here together. This family is here today to win a championship. You gotta get the 100%. You gotta go get it. I've been playing like a chill out. Hey, we're not satisfied yet, okay? What do you think's coming? A chance, right? with his third rushing tally of the day. Pitches it back. He can throw the ball. He does. He's going to run. Weaves inside traffic. Stays on his feet. Down the sideline. He throws. Touchdown bottom. You betcha. Coming back to throw his Whitmer. Hit as he throws. Pitch up. Pitch up. Well, there was also some pretty cool history in the 11 AA title game we didn't get to there as Piers McKenzie Rath became the first girl to play in and score in a South Dakota State Championship football game. The senior kicker booted a pair of extra points in the Gubs 38-20 win over Huron on Friday night. It's actually Rath's second state championship since she was the goalie on Piers AA State Soccer title team. Though she always had playing for the football team on her mind. She put in a lot of work before she actually ever got to kick in a game, which is the, probably the most amazing part. I mean, she kicked after soccer practice for eight straight weeks just to get an opportunity to win the spot in week nine. And, you know, I said she did it very, very well. And I'm just so proud of her to, to come out here and do what she did. I mean, that's a very, very challenging thing if you think about doing something you've never done before for four weeks and then having to do it on the biggest stage, you can do it right away. Congrats to all our champions. For the second straight year, congrats to the Northwestern Red Raiders. They are heading to the NAIA playoffs. And this time around, they're going to get to host Northwestern finished the season 9-1 with their lone loss to unbeaten top seed Morningside. And they'll host a pretty familiar team to Dakota State in presentation, the North Star Athletic Champion Dickinson State Blue Hawks on Saturday, kickoff time to be announced. Damian Hahn's first dual meet as head coach of the 19th ranked South Dakota State wrestling program is a dandy. A date with the 11th ranked Arizona State Sun Devils at the Sanford Pentagon this afternoon. 133 pounds, that big crowd was jazzed up to see SDSU's defending national champion Seth Gross against Josiah Klein. Gross gets out of Klein's hold, folds him over backwards, scoring near fall points. Can't quite finish the pin, but he would give Han and the people what they wanted a few moments later as he corrals Klein by the neck, gets the count, and then gets the pin. That's his 90th win with SDSU. Jacks lead the duel 6-5. to five. 141 pounds, Riley Molitor trailing Corey Crooks. Molitor trying to fight back with a reversal. Wasn't quite enough, though, as he fell 10-4. 149 pounds, 17th ranked Henry Pohlmeyer against Joshua Maruka. Maruka gets Pohlmeyer by the legs early and gets the early takedown in the first. Trailing by three now in the third period. Pohlmeyer gets out of Maruka's grasp and gets the two points to pull to within one. But Maruka would ride him out the rest of the, rest of the way and get a 5-3 victory, and the Jacks fall in the duel 30-9. On the volleyball court, regular season finale in Vermilion for the Coyotes, welcoming NDSU. First set, Mag Madison Jurgen sets Haley Dotsis. She knocks it off the back, and USD takes it 25-18. Dotsis with a team height, 12 kills. 
Second set, more of the same. Jurgens to Claire Gertis for the hammer as USD takes that set 25 to 18. And they have no problems finishing things out in the third set as Elizabeth Lotion knocks it off a defender in the back row. Coyotes get the sweep and have 19 wins, 3-0. They head to the Summit League Tournament now where they will be the number two seed. And the advantage of that is they get a bye. They, won't, they only have to win two matches to get to the NCAA Tournament. They'll get the winner of Nebraska, Omaha, and NDSU Saturday night at 7 o'clock. The tournament is in Denver Championships on Sunday. The Central Region Division II Volleyball Tournament pairings announced tonight. They will be held in Kearney, Nebraska, Northern State. The three seed plays Washburn on Thursday at 2.30, followed by SMSU, the five seed, against defending national champion Concordia St. Paul. Sioux Falls just missing out on the trip to their first D2 NCAA tournament. After the volleyball match, the USD women's basketball team played their home over against Incarnate Word and unveiled their Summit League regular season championship banner, and they unveiled Madison McKeever. Nice shake and drive there. She had 12 points. It's 24-7 after one. Speaking of unveilings, that's Hannah Shervin. She's a New Mexico transfer, had to sit out last year. She looks really good. 15 points to lead the Yotes. And she played some good defense right there, getting the steal and starting the Coyotes in transition, eventually ending things with a Kiara Duffy. Three-pointer from about NBA range. USD led this thing 56 to 20 and a half, so uh, the bird was not the word for incarnate word as the Coyotes get another three from Allison Arns. She was one of four in double figures with 11. Yeah, big one, 96 to 43 Coyotes in a walk. The Lincoln boys cross country team won the South Dakota State Championship in record time at Yankton Trails Park a couple weeks ago. So a similar performance in today's Nike Cross Heartland Regional might give them to a chance to compete for a national championship. Lincoln hoping for a top two finish, which would give them an automatic qualifier to the national meet on December 1st in Portland, Oregon. Winner of the boys race, the winner last year, Drew Bosley, the Wisconsin State Champion, taking it in 1501 to repeat as champion. As for the Patriot boys, they're wearing those Bison Running Company logos because well, they couldn't wear their high school uniforms. They finished 10th, so they will not make the national meet. They can complete a fantastic year nonetheless. And in the women's race, Battle of Minnesota State Champions, AA winner Emily Covert of Minneapolis Washburn pulling away from Cotter's Grace Ping in 1706. Congrats to everyone who ran. Elsewhere today, the red hot Minnesota Wild in St. Louis. No pun intended here. We have a wild play. Crazy bounce off the boards comes to Zach Parisi who puts it in behind his back. That ties things up at one. We're still tied in the third. When Mikhail Granlin gets a nice bounce on the turnover and snipes that one home. The Wild keep on rolling. They win by a final of three to two. Of course, the Vikings had a bye week, but you can watch them each of the next two weeks right here on KDLT. They go to Chicago next Sunday and then host Green Bay two weeks from tonight. We're looking forward to having the purple right here. We're back in one moment.